framing. Framing is all about changing perspective. Oftentimes in NLP neurolinguistic programming, it is used in order to influence somebody or change somebody's mind or their mindset about you or perhaps mindset about your own self. So usually we're using framing against somebody within conversation or within relation to somebody. So let's say somebody's trying to change your framing saying, oh no, I'm the boss, right? And, and they're exuding that body language, verbality, et cetera, et cetera. And then you hold your frame. So holding your frame is, no, I'm not going to change my perspective based on your framing. I'm going to hold my framing. It becomes a battle of frames. <laughs> so whoever has a stronger frame usually wins. So this is from the show Peaky Blinders. It's a perfect example of frame control, frame battles holding the frame and even breaking the frame. Get your weapons out, boys, and load them up. So that's, that's Kimberly. Take your time. Hold them up in the air so they can see what we've got. He said, hold your guns up so they can see what we've got. So it's trying to show dominance through physical form. So in this case, they're guns. You can even see the way uh, Thomas Shelby walks. So whenever you want to show that you're dominant, you want to have some sort of spacing. When it comes to arms with men, they tend to space out their arms like this. So there's a gap between the arm and the body itself. Rather than keeping it tight to your body, he expands out. More guns and no balls, right Billy boy? And just, you can notice everybody's stance and everybody is framing, not just the two leaders, but the people behind the leaders. And what they do is they tend to mirror whatever the leader is doing. It was enough to be like this, Kimber. <laughs> Too late rule that. You bit off more than you can chew, you little toe rag, and now I'm gonna take over this shit out. Oh. We have to use guns. Let's use proper guns. So Thomas Shelby is using the same type of framing. Uh, in this case, they're really trying to intimidate each other. So that's the framing at hand right now. Sergeant. Okay, so whenever you put your hands in your pocket, uh, that it's usually a sign of insecurity. It's also a sign that you're trying to hide something. So it's something that you want to take your hands out of the pocket if you want to show trust or that you are trustworthy. But this shows insecurity right here. Thorn, reporting for duty, sir. You were saying something about being outgunned. <laughs> okay, so then Thomas really framing through his verbal words, right? He's being a little bit witty, but also look at the stance, right? I have nothing to hide. His palms are up. His stance is strong. Right, a lot of space in here. And Kimberly still with his hands in his pocket. So just based on the stance alone, I would say that Thomas is winning this framing. Killian Murphy, the actor who plays Thomas Shelby, he even says in an interview, there's such a big gap between me and Thomas Shelby that it takes me a while to get into the mode of being Tommy. You can even see image-wise how extremely different they, they are. Personally, me as this woman just being attracted to masculine energy, Thomas Shelby really embodies that. He's very attractive. But then when it comes to Killian Murphy, no offense to him, he's a handsome guy, but looking upon an image of Killian himself, I have no attraction towards him. So it's very interesting because it's the same person, but when you embody a different version of yourself, you become a whole different person. It is all about framing and state changes, okay? So that's what we're going to learn today. Number one is to know what your frame is. So know what you want to embody. Even if you have a specific character, not even a real person in your mind, and you want to step into that person, have that person in your head, or have a version of yourself that you've experienced, and you're like, oh, that was the confident me, and I want to feel like that all the time. You can even name them something separate, just like Beyonce had Sasha Fierce, 
her alter ego. And I talk about alter egos in my one-on-one -on -one sessions in my course. So if you're interested in that, please just description down below. And step number two is embodying that. So you have to be able to do a state change from being whoever, however you feel, whatever you are right now to boom. Now I'm that, right? From Killian being Killian Murphy to Thomas Shelby. From Norma Jean being Norma Jean Baker to Marilyn Monroe. There is a process, there is a change that needs to happen. So there's a perspective change. So that's the framing. So now that you know who you want to become, you can state change into that. So how do you state change? State change really goes into posture and breath. I go into a whole visualization exercise. If you're interested in that, I'll link that down below. Go check that out afterwards. But at the core of it, you want to concentrate on your body language, right? How your body is placed and your breath work. Is this person calm? Are they in this soft energy? Are they, right? Are they here or are they pumped? Are they walking into the room with an enormous amount of energy. How is their posture? How are they breathing, right? And, and there's this certain kind of energy that comes into place. So who are they? How do they embody that? And if you're not sure, I really suggest you do the visualization exercise because it'll help you get there. But once you're able to get there and you know how that feels like, you can embody it, memorize the breath, the posture. Next step is to attack your subconscious. <laughs> I have a free, free night affirmation on leadership. So if that's something you're interested in, then I'll link that below as well. But it's an eight hour tape. You listen to it while you sleep and it does all the work. Now there is a specific time in your sleep cycle in which it's going to actually go into your subconscious. So it's not that you have to listen to the whole eight hours, but it's the whole eight hours because we don't know when you're going to go into that sleep cycle, right? And it's when your subconscious relaxes and it takes in information. That's why it's bad to leave your TV on while you sleep because you don't know what they're saying. I highly don't suggest doing that if it's potentially something negative. Um, like if you're falling asleep to a war movie, maybe don't do that <laughs> because you might wake up with anxiety or with a sense of fear and you have to protect yourself, but that's what happens, right? But if you want to reprogram your subconscious, the easiest way, sleep with night affirmations. But then we take that and imagine that you feel strong and embodied and rich and just powerful, right? If you really feel that and you have to really feel it, then other people will feel it too. It's just about energetic. If you've ever caught somebody looking at you or you felt somebody behind you, and of course you don't have eyes at the back of your head, but you felt somebody behind you and you look back and there was somebody behind you, you feel people's energy. And there's always that one person, you know who I'm talking about, who walks into a room and you're just like, whoa. If you've ever felt that before, like, whoa. There's, there's something and it's not that they're wearing an, an outlandish outfit or anything like that. They're not peacocking. They're not doing anything crazy, but you just, there's something you feel from them. And it goes beyond the technique of body language. It goes beyond the technique of tonality or how you walk and how you move. It's just this embodiment. And if you can get there, then you can really go and do anything because sometimes maybe you want to embody that leadership, that authority when you're at work, but you want to embody this sensual love openness with your romantic partner, right? But whatever you want to embody, you can choose those moments as long as you know who those people are and you can state change, state change, state change into these new people. And if you just want to state change your whole entire being, that might take a while, but you can get there. It's the same reason why when we lose weight, because I've been, you know, losing weight, I've been on my weight loss journey in, but it's more than just weight loss. Now it's just this lifestyle and just moving my body. And now I feel comfortable in my body. Now I have this being and knowing that I'm like, Hey, I'm walking different. I'm talking different, but that's because now I'm in this new frame of mind, my new perception of myself and people always uh, people have been coming up to me and they're saying yeah you feel lighter you seem different you're just more vibrant yeah because i changed myself right there, there's an internal state shift and then now my framing of myself my perceived framing of myself is different and i'm emitting that out and then people see me in a different light the perception has changed and i'm holding that frame by continuing to do these lifestyle changes 
Now, if I want to become more, if I want to do more, then I can do that, right? Um, so if it is something that you want to change your life, change your being, then it might take a second, but you can get there by doing all these other things. So whether it's, I just want to be more confident when I speak on stage as a thought leader, you do the work beforehand, then you state change, then you frame it, then you walk on stage and then you just are. Again, this is Lady Tina Leader, and if you wanna do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or check out one of my workshops, upcoming workshops, then click the link down below and I will see you soon.